<clears throat> one, two, one, two. I think our levels look okay. Let's have a look at our rate. Okay, my mate looks good, folks. Good start. I'm going to clean my glasses so we can actually see through the damn things. How is everyone this evening? Mm -hmm. Ah, looks like it's catching up. Yeah, that's interesting. Evening, Ed. Just get my um, CAD set up here. Something very odd going on. PCB. That's weird. Um, let me have a look. Oh, there we go. Just let me um, move a few pieces around, ready for later, whilst I'm waiting for people to join. How is everyone on this Wednesday, well, evening here, afternoon in the States? Uh, what else do I need in here? I wonder if I can... We're going to need this in a bit when we go through the um, alloy stuff. Bear with me. Can I do a move back? Oh, no, I can't. Right. He has forgotten. Okay, so the evening I want to cover uh, a couple of different things. I need to do, later I'm going to do some CAD work on the Rev B, which you can see here, of the um, alloy board. Right, just get back to the main thing. So it's been an interesting week, really. Um, let's have a look at the community stuff first. I think. 
I don't think there's a lot that's new. Just go onto the forum and just double check that. Uh, Wow, tipping down outside. I can hear it banging on the roof. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Um, so yeah, forum wise, I posted some picks for alloy. Um, on the um, on the alloy page in the forum, uh, showing it working. Um, got all the LEDs and stuff working now, which is kind of cool. The breadboards. Uh, show you all this. Help if I take the camera lens cap off. Always good. Why can't I see the camera? Okay. Here's the cam. Okay. Oh, powered on. I'll just check. Yeah, got power on. So why am I not seeing it? Hold on, is there something in front? Oh. I worked out um, what was going on with the Logic analyzer last week, um, and the reason why that wasn't. Um, oh, here we go. Got the one one turned on. That's fine. Ta da! This blows. So um, the problem I had last week was when I was trying to use the logic analyzer, whenever I tried to capture the window, it would just be black. It's just like a black frame. Turns out there's a few subtle settings depending on how the software is written. So um, for example, in the um, Sailey logic analyzer settings, I have to choose uh, capture method Windows 10 1903 and up if I don't do that or if I leave it on auto it just doesn't play it just ends up with a black screen which is a bit frustrating frankly there you go so let me just 
So this is all now operating as it should be. And then I'll go back to community stuff in a sec. I don't have the analyzer plugged in this time, unfortunately. <clears throat> so I've had some good fun this week. Oh, come on. I've got sublime text complaining now. Typical. Let's just put this in temporarily. Oh, not more package mess. Mm. Let me just copy these folks. Okay, my frame rate seems okay as well this evening, which is good. So in the um, in the forum, oh, one minute, why is this taking so long? Just one second. Uh, boot logic there. So why isn't this running? Let's just get Putty up. Bear with me. Some misbehavings. Okay, right, I'll leave that for a second. I don't know why that's doing that. So, uh, in terms of uh, the forum, uh, after I did the coding last week, the um, there were a few comments about the code. I do apologise. It was a bit scrappy, the Python. Uh, thank you in particular, Laurie, for pointing out some errors in the code. Um, one of the things that he was pointing out was the because we were working in 64 byte chunks we might either over or under run the image buffer in this case it was actually uh, uh, divisible by 64 so it wasn't an issue but I, I do need to fix that in the last part of the uh, read and write from the file to the device when it's writing Hiya, Laurie, by the way. Um, also that, yes, you can do plus equals in Python. Uh, it's increment, i.e. plus plus, that you can't do. Um, so that's actually what I meant, but I wasn't clearly wasn't concentrating hard enough. Um, OK, 
Okay. Uh, Ed also made some comments of, to me um, about the stream. Um, streams quite long, two hours or over often. Uh, the reason I have it for that period of time is to enable me um, to cover various bits. A lot of the streams that I follow, uh, let me just put myself up. A lot of the streams that I follow are of that kind of duration, and I quite like them. Um, if you're new to following some of the streams, uh, bear in mind that they're slightly different from watching like a pre-organized or edited video. Um, I find when I'm watching streams that I dive in and dive out, I don't give them the full attention for the, for the entire stream quite often. Um, that's not necessarily always the case. Sometimes I do. Depends what they're talking about. But, you know, don't feel that you have to do that. Um, it's not actually necessary. You can dive in and out. And then when there's interesting bits, uh, you can participate a bit more or pay more closer attention. So I've had some uh, fun with this little guy. Just to remind you, because my uh, camera is doing something strange at the moment. I have to use Ed's trick in a minute if it doesn't focus. My head's being focused on instead. There we go. So um, this is the Rev A board that I've been working on. Uh, and if you can see that white thing towards the top there, uh, that is the antenna. So one of the things that I try to do this week is actually um, see if the Wi-Fi was operating. Um, and the answer is yes, it is operating, but it's not operating very well. And I was wondering whether it was actually those antennas because I hadn't used those before. My Wi-Fi experience is, as far as designing the electronics, is very low. I don't, I don't do radio generally. So, um, but I don't think the antenna's the problem. Um, if you remember a few streams ago when I was designing the PCB for this Reve, one of the things was I needed to cut out all of the PCB sections underneath the antenna um, because you don't want anything interfering with it. So you don't want any signals going through there. It's like a keep out area and a cut out area. So when you design the component, in this case, the uh, landing pattern and symbol for the antenna, you can actually do cutouts and it cuts out on the top layer and it cuts out on the bottom layer, but you can't specify what happens on any number of layers that may be in between. In this case, it's a four layer board. So I had to manually do that on the PCB itself rather than in the footprint, which I did, but I inadvertently forgot to do the same for the feed track. Um, let me just show you what that looks like. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's get me CAD up here. Because it's the same one here because it's not been um, corrected. So if I zoom in here, you can see this is the track. It goes from the ESP 32S2. It's about 0.2 cent, a uh, 0.2 mil wide, and about the entire length is about I don't know, just under two and a half millimeters, something like that. So it's very short because of its low dimensions relative to the wavelength. 
you know, it's less than 20%, probably less than 10%. Uh, it's a 2.4 gig signal. You don't, well, you can put a matching network in there, but you don't necessarily gain a lot from doing so. Um, however, what you do need to do is make sure that the cutout from the antenna extends underneath the um, the feed track. And not only did I forget to extend the cutout there, but I actually had another track underneath. Although that other track isn't what's doing the damage to my signal. What's doing the damage to my signal is the ground plane that sits underneath this track on the next layer down. And if you calculate what that means, um, that track will equate to something like about 100 picofarads uh, over that ground plane. Now, 100 picofarads at 2.4 gigahertz is, it will dissipate most of the signal before it actually gets to the antenna. Um, not to mention, you know, it's basically like a low-pass filter. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah, so my results are fairly poor on the Wi-Fi. I mean, I literally just see the strongest signal, but not consistently. So I couldn't do anything really useful with it, which is annoying. I know that the software is working, but um, I couldn't do any quantitative Wi-Fi type testings. So I've got I've got that to fix, uh, among other things. So uh, that was a kind of joyous experience. It took me a while to work out what I was doing wrong there. Um, that's just silly that I forgot to do that, really. But there you go. That's why you do prototypes. Um, yeah, I'm having a look, uh, Ed, at the console. So Ed says, if all if you happen to show a console type window, could you arrange a bigger font for it? Uh, oh, yeah, that's tricky. It can be done. Uh, hold on, let me just do a... Test. Oh, yeah, beat me to it. I'm resolution challenged. <laughs> okay, Ed. So is it this that you're talking about? I'll tell you what would help, actually, is... Um, if I reduce the schematic size as well, bear with me. Because it's going over the schematic at the moment. Do, 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 do. Let me just make this window slightly smaller. Ed, that might help. Oh, it went straight back. Would you rather believe it? Okay, well, at least the schematic won't be there. I, I can adjust it, Ed, but unfortunately, it's not something I can do as I'm going um, with that because it uses a kind of um, HTTP widget to pick up the Twitch chat. Um, a putty window. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the putty window is really small, as is PowerShell as well. I won't be doing that so much today but yeah I do need to solve that um, yeah it's annoying that you can't you know just increase the text size easily on those things so anyhow I had some fun with this uh, this week uh, testing various different things um, but it's all working quite nicely the Wi-Fi as I say could be a lot better, but that's down to my error. So I've got to fix that. So I'm going to spend some time on the CAD 
uh, a bit later. In fact, let me just go and save this. That's not my tip. Were there any questions, other questions, before I move on and talk about um, I'm going to mention black ice and ally. Um, okay. So um, we're going to do some CAD work on Rev B in a bit. But before that, I just want to remind you what. Black Ice 5 was looking like. So this was the potential layout of Black Ice 5. And one of the questions that I was going through in my head was if we went, say, an Arduino shaped route for the board layout, which is what we've got described in this particular CAD. Is that the right way to go? And there, there's a couple of different ways to to do it. Um, this is one of the possible ways, which is based around the STM32L433 microcontroller. You should be able to see my cursor yeah, here controlling the FPGA and then I'm hanging off these um, a quad SPI flash and a quad SPI um, RAM size to be determined uh, if I use a RAM it'll probably be the larger one like the 64 megabit 8 megabyte um, one of the questions we had down here was whether we'd have both the P mod and the camera. Well, I pretty much decided that I'm not going to have both of those on there. Some of the other pins will be on here. They will be available as well. But trying to use both the P mod and the camera on the same connector is um, in the same area just doesn't work I can't think of a decent way of doing that the other possibility is I could have a 18 pin header here which supports the um, through hole versions of the camera boards um, that you see I wonder if I've got one here bear with me I think I might have one somewhere because these are quite common and people have them. Uh, where would it be? Where would it be? Where did I put my? Hmm. Try to put the mics off. Yeah, hold on. Oh, great. Okay. First time. If you've ever seen one of these, these are very common. They're used a lot in the uh, Arduino world. And then that's what's on the back. Very simple. So these um, are the kind of thing that people might have lying about. They have very com few components on them actually. They're more or less just a camera and there's a couple of things like a few diodes, resistors and caps. Mainly passive. 
and that connector is uh, two rows of nine, which is odd. It's like an 18 pin. Very strange. Two of them you don't actually need, if I remember rightly. One's for powering down, and I can't remember what the other one is. But you can get away with using eight of them. Um, one of the other things this sometimes has on there is like a little regulator and or um, sometimes as a an oscillator clock or a crystal can't see on this one whether that's the case hold on let me just double check hmm. but anyhow so what we could do there's one other possibility is have that connector here so that would be let me just add one in uh, just to show you what that would be like You can either do it via an IDC cable, or you could have it plugging in directly. Now we may be slightly challenged dimensionally to fit it in, but it might be possible with a bit of rearranging to do so. See, just about fit. So that's a possibility. And the the pins for this are, are almost identical as the pins for the camera camera F. PC. Uh, there's one less, which I think is the uh, provided clock. I don't think you need to provide that on the um, true hole version. Just looking at Laurie's comments. First, I don't really see the point of two up 5K boards. I would rather you worked on the ECP5 board. Well, I am working on that as well. Um, I also doubt that full size Arduino boards are that popular anymore. The main point of the form factor is to support Arduino shields. And the only one I saw used on the Black Ice was the Game Duino. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and interestingly, for those that haven't uh, seen it yet, it's strange that you should bring that up because I was talking to our good friend Ken about this. Let me just get you the URL. Damn it, why can't I see this? I'm sure, I have it open. Hold on. Let me look it up. Do do do. Uh, what was it called? Uh, you know. Oh, yes, the Dazzler. So let me just um, get that link for you guys so that you can have a look at it. Strange that you should mention that because I was talking to Ken about this um, because Ken had been talking um, to the designer of the original game, Game Duino. And it's an interesting... Um, it's um, X Camera Labs, I think, um, 
is his um, organization. The um, let me just bring this up so everyone else can see it as well. Uh, where was it? Hold up. We can see what we're talking about here. So it's a new version of the game, Duino. As you say, Arduino, it's uh, as you say, Laurie, it's um, an Arduino Shield um, product. And this is an interesting, um, interesting solution. So, what this seems to be aimed at is enabling, you know, smaller uh, processes like microcontrollers, etc to get basically um, HDMI output but it's not just simply getting the signal in output um, this actually uses a, um, a GPU um, that was designed um, by the chap that runs X camera labs he designed a chip for FTDI originally uh, which is a GPU accelerator chip and you can literally create your graphics over SPI using this chip and it does all the graphic primitives for you so you can load up all sorts of bits into it like sprites and stuff and then tell it where to move things to and it will do all of the hard, heavy lifting for you that was the original game duino as as laurie said it and it was an arduino shield so this is like the next iteration of that um unfortunately that chip as was didn't have it had um lcd support and stuff but it didn't have hdmi output properties um the what what he's done what he's done here is he's added in um an fpga which is a spartan 6 he does mention it down here which is quite interesting let me find the specs for you there we go um so yeah the gpu is called um the BT815 1.1 sorry the BT85 815 and the FPGA is using here is a Spartan 6 and LX9 um, and he's added 8 megabytes of flash uh, as storage to that so what the FPGA does is it takes the digital output that would normally go to the um, LCD and it converts that into a HDMI mode a mode that's supported by HDMI which I think isn't the full version it's a 1280 by 720 I believe uh, with 48 kilohertz um, stereo audio so that's quite an interesting thing um, and Ken and I are looking at um, looking at this technology here. It's a shame he used a Spartan because that isn't supported by the open tools at this point in time. I think there is there might be somebody working on that. I know the uh, Project X-Ray to support the Xilinx uh, chips for Yosis and the open source place and root is aimed at the Artix and vertex chips it's not aimed at the spartan the spartan chips are the older generation but I th i'm sure i saw that somebody mentioned um supporting spartan uh adding spartan support into the open source tools but i i can't remember who said it or who was going to work on that but it's uh, I don't know. I don't think it's mature at this point. So it's it's a shame that the FPGA used was one that we can't uh, support with the open source tools. 
but nevertheless it's an interesting um, it's an interesting device and more importantly if you look closely it's actually got on the board one of these modules so if you look at the shield here it's actually the bulk the clever part of it is actually a module and this was something that Ken and I were Ken was bringing this to my attention um, and we were wondering whether we could do something with this because it was a very interesting uh, very powerful combination so yeah um, I know sorry I'm getting sidetracked but it was kind of interesting yes thank you uh, Laurie yes James James Bowman is a designer um, so that's an interesting project um, yeah I mean lots of people still do use Arduinos though Laurie it's there's a surprising number of people but when I say they use Arduinos they don't always use Arduino Arduinos uh, the format itself is very popular um, even if you go down to things like you know this so that's a um, which one is this one this is an M Cortex M0 board from ST that I use for um, for developing um, something I'm working on at the moment but if you look closely guess what headers it's got on there it's got the Arduino layout as well as a secondary set what do they call them they've got their own name for their secondary set uh, does it say on here morpho extension header pins they call it so they have two literally two sets of pins if you look closely you, the inner pins are Arduino headers and then the outer double row pins are their morpho connectors so when I say Arduino is still used a lot, I mean, I'm talking about a combination of the hardware pins and boards made by all sorts of different people, not necessarily by Arduino themselves. And obviously, quite often, the Arduino environment, the software environment, uh, something I don't have much experience with, to be quite honest. I know others have used that a lot more than I have, um, but apparently the IDE is um, has been significantly improved as well. Um, I hear there is even a dark mode, unbelievably. So that's a bit of a sidetrack, but yeah, I mean, it's still used quite extensively, Laurie. It's, it's an option. Um, so the question is, in this case was what were you going to do with the uh, the non FPGA pins and uh, one way to deal with that is to break them out into the uh, Arduino pins because they may be useful at least then to people that have Arduino shields etc or it gives access to them. They're commonly available in the marketplace. That's why people use that pin out because it's there's a lot of peripherals that you can add on. Um, so that's really why that's possible. I mean, one of the other possibilities is you don't go down the Arduino route with the Black Eyes 5, but you go down the Raspberry Pi route, for instance. Um, I mean, you could, if you wanted, have a board that that uh, has all the FPGA break breakouts and ADC, but also can connect to a Raspberry Pi, or like we have done in the past, it can actually support the, uh, you know, the Pi Zero actually sitting on top of it, which is still an interesting avenue. Something else that's very popular is the um, um, so if you look at uh, Adafruit for example, they do things like the Metro. Uh, I'm 
No, not what I meant. What do we know? Metro, pay the fruit. Why can't I seem to find it at their site? How odd. So these are quite popular as well. Uh, and in addition to Arduino, some of these, like the Metro M0 and the M4, M4 Express, and I think the Adafruit Grand Central M4 Express, all of which have Arduino pinouts or Arduino Mega pinouts. They all support um, Circuit Python in addition to the Arduino software. So it's still pretty popular stuff. Um, and it means that you've got access to peripherals that fit into the. Uh, those headers which could be useful. But I understand what you're saying. Larry. I know you want the ECP5 and I am working on that, on the Black Edge version of that. Um, it's quite complicated to get that how I want it. I will cover that in a future session. Uh, the only thing I was thinking here is because if we've got something small, you know, like the uh, the alloy, we still need something in the middle, I guess. Small is good, but Lots of people like bigger ones, lower cost. Um, and it's, it's still quite popular, you know. The black ices are still popular. I'm just going to um, copy that link. I'd be interested to know what you think, Laurie and Ed, about this shield, the Dazzler. I'll read this in a bit. It's quite an interesting approach. And we could certainly use that module to do all sorts of things. You know, we could design a game, retro games unit around that, which would be interesting. Please do let me know your thoughts. So one of the other things I was thinking is, you know, as another alternative for the Black Ice 5 is to go the Raspberry Pi route. That was something that we didn't exploit quite as well as we could have done before. I don't know what your thoughts on that are, Laurie. But um, it's just a case of covering the different bases here, really. The different market segments. Um, the ECP5 stuff is tricky because um, I have to integrate the STM32 and the FPGA in memory and that's that's quite a tricky thing to do and um, one thing that annoys me actually is the premium you pay on certain microcontrollers for having larger flash amounts um, because I want to be able to have uh, MicroPython support 
and probably circuit python as well and that's proving tricky for the current ecp5 design although um a solution may be forthcoming um certainly for circuit python i'm not sure how easy that's going to be for micro python um we'll have to wait and see on that Uh, we may have just had a uh, disconnect That's very strange. The frame rate looks really good. Okay, are we back up? He says, ask patiently. It's showing me very good frame rates now. It did tell me that it cut out, but it seems to be back to normal. Yay, nay, Laurie, Ed, are you seeing this yet? There is a delay. I'm hoping it's back up now. Seems to be reporting okay this end. <clears throat> Laurie, Ed, is it back up? What is going on? Status is now showing viewers. Um, can you guys hear me now and see me? I'm hoping that you can. Seems to be reporting okay. Let me know, someone. Before I move on. <clears throat> 